During a roller coaster ride, guests experience a unique combination of sensations. Whether it's being pushed into your seat or flung out of it, roller coasters have been specifically designed to provide riders with a select combination of feelings. These feelings differ heavily at certain points of the ride, creating an overall experience that's unlike any other. In short, roller coasters are all about forces. The trains undergo a huge number of directional changes as they navigate the track, each of which provide a particular force and sensation on riders. In this video, we'll get to understand the types of forces experienced on roller coasters, as well as the sensations each type causes guests to feel during their thrilling ride. At this point, some of you may be asking the question, what are forces? A force can be described as a push or pull on an object as a result of an interaction with another object. In the case of roller coasters, the design of the track produces a force on the trains, causing them to follow a specific path. You'll often see the term G-force used to describe roller coasters. G-force, short for gravitational force, is a measurement of acceleration and not specifically a force. However, a force on an object causes that object to accelerate. In the case of gravity, the force pulling everything towards the centre of the Earth causes objects to accelerate downwards when dropped. This acceleration is denoted 1G, 1G force, and causes the perception of weight as we know it. Therefore, a roller coaster which boasts a maximum of 5Gs, 5G force, causes riders to feel five times their normal weight as they are effectively experiencing an acceleration five times larger than the one pulling them to the centre of the Earth. During most roller coaster rides, guests will experience a range of G-force types, each of which act in different directions. Linear G-forces occur in the forwards and backwards direction. Positive and negative G-forces occur in the upwards and downward directions respectively, while lateral G-forces occur from side to side in the left and right directions. Linear G-forces occur as a result of an increase or decrease in speed. A great example of this is a launch. As the train of the ride accelerate, guests are subject to linear G-forces which occur in the direction of speed change. However, as the trains themselves are being accelerated and not the riders, guests become pinned into their seats. This allows for the riders and trains to accelerate together along the launch straight. A sudden reduction in speed, caused by a brake run for example, causes riders to travel forwards in their seat until stopped by the restraint. Positive and negative g-forces occur in opposite directions. Positive g-forces act in the upward direction, while negative g-forces act in the downward direction. Both of these g-force types can be experienced through a change in elevation. Riders will experience positive g-force in valleys, sections of track which continuously angle towards the upward direction. At the bottom of drops, riders are often pushed down into their seat, causing them to feel heavier than normal. This type of force is usually most common on roller coasters. A ride which boasts a maximum g-force of 5 allows guests to experience 5 g's of positive force at some point during their ride. Negative g-forces, on the other hand, provide the opposite sensation. As riders crest the hill of a roller coaster at speed, they are subject to negative g-forces which pull the trains down, keeping them secure to the track. During these sections, riders often rise up and out of their seat, causing them to be pushed down by the restraint. This phenomenon is known effectively as airtime. Roller coasters use a mixture of strong and weak negative g-forces to subject guests to a range of sensations. Weak negative g-forces, known as floater airtime, give riders a sensation of total weightlessness, causing them to float in the air. Strong negative g-forces, known as ejector airtime, causes guests to quickly rise up out of their seat, pinning them to the underside of their restraint. Ejector airtime is much more aggressive than floater, often occurring at the top of sharp hills. Finally, the last g-force type is lateral. Lateral g-forces occur from side to side in the left and right directions. It can often be experienced during sharp turns in the track, especially ones that are unbanked. For example, wild mouse coasters, ones with flat, sudden turns, produce high lateral g's. As this occurs, riders are thrown to the side of the car 
in the opposite direction to the movement of the train. Extreme lateral g-forces, however, are quite uncomfortable on roller coasters. To reduce them, roller coaster designers bank the track which converts lateral g-forces into positive g-forces. This allows for the ride to be more comfortable for all guests on board. To recap, we have four main g-force groups. Linear g-forces, which act in the forward and backward directions, positive and negative g-forces, which act in the upwards and downwards directions respectively, and lateral g-forces, which act in the left and right directions. Each group causes riders to move in the opposite direction to which the g-force acts as you rise up out of your seat as you experience downward pointing negative g-forces. Interestingly, on a roller coaster ride, it isn't only the intensity of the accelerational forces that affect the sensations felt by riders. Sustained g-forces, ones which last for several seconds, affect guests more than extreme spikes of intensity. For example, a long sweeping bend could subject riders to 3 g's of positive force for several seconds. During this time, the body finds it difficult to pump blood up to the head. This continued exposure puts stress on the body, which can lead to riders beginning to grey out. During this phenomenon, guests' field of view begins to shrink and become excessively grey. If riders are subject to grey out for extended periods of time, they may black out and become unconscious. Fortunately, once the forces have been removed, riders regain consciousness and normal vision with no damage done to the body. To conclude, forces play a large part of any roller coaster ride. Designers ensure that G-forces experienced throughout the circuit are exciting yet comfortable for all riders on board. So next time you're on a roller coaster, take notice of the forces experienced and how they move you in your seat. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time. Check out our brand new podcast, Coasterbot Rambles, where I talk about theme parks with roller coaster novice Zoe. You can find us on iTunes and all good podcast apps, as well as on Twitter at CBR Podcast.